Hi Sequels friends! So my channel lately has all been what sold, flip of the week, what sold, what sold, what sold. Let's do something fun. Let's do an unboxing. Today we are going to do an unboxing from ThreadUp and if you haven't guessed by looking over here, it's a DIY denim box. So come on, let's see what I got. Hi Sequels friends, welcome back to my channel. It is so fabulous to have you here this Friday afternoon. I hope you guys had a wonderful week um, and I can't wait to share this unboxing with you. Let's get into it. Okay, DIY denim box from ThreadUp. Now, first of all, if you're new to ThreadUp, there is definitely a code in the comment section below. If you need that, that's down there. And also for full transparency to any of you guys that use it, Thank you so much because I get a little discount on some of the boxes and stuff like this that I buy. But a DIY denim box is a denim box that you'll get and it's intended for DIY purposes, which means a lot of these, you'll get a lot of items. <laughs> um, it comes in two big old boxes and a lot of these items may not be worthy of selling. They are intended for DIYing, for crafting. As always, there is stuff that I'm not gonna keep, so I'm gonna show you that stuff first and show you what's wrong with it to give you a kind of an idea of what you're dealing with in these boxes. And then I'm gonna show you this big pile of stuff that I did keep, which it's always good that the keep pile is bigger than the giveaway pile. Now, a lot of you guys have told me in the past, hey, Heather, why do you give all this stuff away? You could throw it all in a big box and sell it. You could. And if that is what you want to do, please go for it and do it. I'm not sure how much money I will make doing that. And I have a very small footprint for an office. In fact, <laughs> I need to take you guys on another tour soon because I've gotten rid of my dining room table and expanded my office into <laughs> the dining room. So I have a little bit bigger footprint than you've seen previously, but I don't have any space to store stuff that isn't going to move quick or isn't gonna make me um, a decent amount of money. So I will just take these items that I don't want and give them to my local charity. So one of the items we have here, it's just uh, baby Sarah. Baby Sarah. They're just little kid shorts. I don't sell kids, so they automatically go in the donate pile. These are um, American Eagle jeans. They are cute, but the number one problem that you'll find in this box and the number one problem with thrifting jeans in general or any kind of used jeans is what I call the crotch puckering. Um, and that just, you know, is what happens with jeans that have a lot of stretch in them. So I don't sell anything with puckering in it. That will be most of the problem with these pants. Um, our Pop Sugar, really cute, lightweight, or a light wash, but they have puckering. Levi's brand, Denison, and there is puckering. These are um, Maurice. I think just because of the brand and the color, I decided not to do these. Sneak Peek. And puckering, pretty obvious puckering on this one, and they are Seven for All Mankind. The Seven for All Mankind definitely would have sold if they weren't damaged. Um, these are just universal thread. Um, but I gotta tell you, Target and Old Navy stuff sells for me. It sells for me quickly. It just does not sell for much. So I would normally list these, but I can't seem to find it right now to show you. But there's some sort of discoloration on these, which is why I didn't end up selling them. I don't know what brand that is, but puckering. Some more little kids, um, Justice. Some more <laughs> little, little kids. Um, these are just Cherokee. Last up are these Gap 1969, and um, there is just discoloration down here that didn't come out with, you know, my OxyClean stain resistor, so I'm not dealing with those. So that gives you kind of an idea of what you're going to get 
um, that you may not want and most of it's going to be puckering there may be some discoloration damages you will get a lot of things that are distressed or have ripped knees I typically sell them because I mean all of us love some distressed jeans so it doesn't matter to me whether it came distressed or they the last wearer made them distressed. So I usually keep all of them. The pile that we're gonna keep, let me just do, before we get into that real quick, just talk about, I received 51 items in this box and I ended up keeping 39 of them to list. Um, and I think I have everything here except for two pairs of shorts that sold. So let's put them up here. Actually, it's one pair of shorts that sold and then also a mini skirt that sold. And between the two of these, I grossed $30.99 and put $14.26 in my pocket. Let me show you what I got and then I'll give you a total of what I think my projections are gonna be at the end. It's just a little bit more fair representation of projections when you've already gotten to see the items. Now the, this is just divided, that's an H&M brand, and they are a US size six. I am gonna go over sizes because sizes are an important thing when it comes to thread up boxes because you can't get stuck with a lot of small sizes. And I don't know about you, but small sizes, they will move for me, but they will not move for a very high retail. I ended up keeping these because even though they're only just H&M, I thought that the pattern was really, really cool. Bullhead Denim Company. Just a light wash, very distressed, um, tapered leg. Uh, it is called The Skinny Boyfriend and they are in a size 24. And all of these items are listed in my shop with the links below. So if there's anything you're interested in, head on over there or um, message me below and we'll do a little PayPal. This is Colors of the World, which I, I'm i curious to know if these are vintage based on the silhouette and the name. It does say a size 38. I am guessing that's a Euro size 38 and not an actual 38. I love these. They are extremely light wash. They have the, um, ankle zip on the bottom. Just everything about these to me seem like uh, 80s jeans, but I don't definitively know. So if you guys know, let me know in the comment section below. Please educate me. I always love to learn new things. I got several pairs of Levi's in this box. Um, these are the 711 Skinny, size 30. Again, like a medium wash, there is definitely uh, some blowout at the knee. It can certainly look high-waisted, which I know that the low rise are trending, but I think most people are still wearing the high waist. These are Lucky brand. Lucky is another brand that typically sells for me, but I don't always get as much as I think I would with it. This is a size two or 26, really pretty darker wash, definitely a lot of fading on the front and very cute flat pockets. These read almost a bit more aughts and styling. This is a great example of something that's been repaired that I still sell because I've still moved things that are repaired and I'll show you in a second. These are Old Navy. They are the boyfriend skinny. As I said, Old Navy typically sells quick for me, but it does not garner a lot of money. See how it's been patched and repaired? I just make sure that I show that in the picture. Some people like the patchwork and the repair look. Marmot. And they are size 32 and based on the silhouette and design I would assume that these are men's jeans dark wash straight leg and kind of a cool little pocket detail right there I like the way it's stitched right there good old Ann Taylor loft she is another example of something that I don't normally pick up while I'm thrifting but I don't have any problems selling some when it comes in a box because again it typically moves but it will not move for a lot of money um, these are a size 24 or 27 or a size four. 
and they are, what, why did I just already forget it? They're the modern straight. Look at these cross hatch. These are some true Gloria Vanderbilt. I gotta tell you these Gloria Vanderbilts typically always sell anytime I get them in a box. I've also had some people give them to me. They always sell. Check out that cross hatch denim. Ah, oh, you gotta love it. Best thing about Gloria, she's roomy in the hips. Um, these are probably ones that I shouldn't list. I'm only trying them because they're super ornate, but I think that it's just um, Cello, C-E-L-L-O, and they're size seven, so it just looks like a junior -y, you know, entry level price point jean. But I've never sold anything that was so embellished, so I thought it would be kind of fun to see if they sell. But it does, as you can see here, have the loop that is undone. And again, I'll just disclose that. They're really heavy. This is for the same customer who likes those Gloria Vanderbilt jeans, and they are Hearts of Palm. Um, elastic waist, blue. Um, you call it cropped, I call it a capri based on the silhouette with some embellishment. If you're into that like coastal beachy grandma vibe thing that's going on, come get these capris. <laughs> Levi's, I told you there was a decent amount of Levi's. This one is also the 7-Eleven skinny. You can see there's some distressing on the back pocket, dark wash, blown out knees um i stopped telling you sizes part way through sorry about that well this one doesn't have a size on it so that would not be a good one to start with uh the cellos were seven i think i did that the hearts of palm are 14. i didn't tell you the gloria vanderbilts but i don't know i don't remember those i know it was a larger size these are rag and bone they are small, so we'll see if these move or not. They are the Capri style, and they're in a size 25. White with no damage on them, so I had to give them a turn. I love, <laughs> I love these, and these are just faded Glory Walmart jeans. They do look to be vintage, if anybody knows. Um, or just, you know, give me your vote down in the comment section below if you think that they're vintage based on the labeling. Um, that loop label makes me think it is. These are Missy size 10. I just love the light wash. It's very um, vintage looking. These are, again, they're cropped. I would call them more of a capri with the little slit down there. And they are a bit roomy through the waist. I don't know. I'm like really into the light wash denim. Now, you know, I tried to fit, fit my fat ass in these jeans, but they didn't fit. Um, <laughs> but not for not trying. These are made well. And I'm curious. I don't know if these came this way or if they were bleach dyed. They are the perfect vintage jean. And it is size 33, which would explain why they didn't fit me, but doesn't mean I couldn't try. High waisted, roomy through the hips. They are clipped at the bottom. Um, they didn't fray up very good in the wash. I'm kind of disappointed by that. But you could play with it to make it fray a little bit more. These are um, just Lee Riders. And they are that, not cross hatched, but it has the, um, not a cross hash, not a rip stop, but you could see the lines running through it. They are definitely a heavy denim. These give me more of a um, older feel as well. And they're riders, so high-waisted and um, lots of booty and hip room. Hip. Booty and hip room. Another small size. These are, again, divided. They are a U.S. size 8. That's not that small. It just looks a little small right here, probably because they're stretch. Um, and just another skinny straight with fraying and um, ripped up knees. I like these too. These have very much the mom jean feel. 
Um, you can see it is worn right here. They are faded glory. It is stretch. They are petite size six, dark wash. These are Gap. They are men's jeans, um, size 3130. They almost have a Wrangler feel with the coloration. You know those like rainbow, uh, rainbow, Wrangler cowboy jeans. They almost have that feel and coloration. Um. I've done some Everlane. I think most of it's been knits, so I don't think I've ever sold any of the jeans. These say a 28 regular, and they are in a faded black denim. There is some um, fraying at the bottom. Imogene and Wille. Again, another black denim, more Levi's, and it is Denison. These are the Ultra, ultra High Rise. Um, super skinny and these are in a decent size let's see they are a little bit yeah 18 or also a 34 definitely skinny fading a little bit of detail on the pocket another pair of Levi's these are the 721 high-rise skinny dark wash with a very um, orange threading classic another pair that looks very comfy. More Lucky Brand jeans. These are in a size 8, 29, or a 29. And again, these are giving me like, hey, Max says hi. Um, these are giving me very like mid-aughts vibes. You can see the lines in the denim, the fading at the thighs, and it does look like there's a slight flare in those. And cute back pocket. Oh. Fashion Massimo. These are the mid-rise jegging. They are in just a size two. So we'll see if we end up with anything at the end of the box, it may be these, but they are in a very um, wearable colorway and I like the distressing. Another pair of Levi's. These are men's and they are, I always forget you gotta get the size all the way at the bottom. They are 3130s. They kind of like, I don't know, I kind of like the gray. It seems very like, rocker artisan in men's jeans they don't look or faded black they seem really gray to me though um another pair of gap men's jeans great wash they are that 1969 these are a beefy heavy jean straight really wearable um, I've never seen this brand before they are closed so if you know anything about this brand let me know it says they're made of Japanese woven and it is the Ami style they are it's gonna blow out the camera because it's black and I'm filming at night they are a black velour pant and it does have the cute ankle zips last time I got a jean box and I got maternity jeans they were the first thing to sell and these are the Isabel maternity jeans 1633 and in a darker wash with some fading so hopefully those will move quickly i just took the lighting down a little bit if it looks like i'm in the shadow because i'm blowing everything out because it's starting to get dark outside these are gap denim button fly jean shorts lots of distressing well not lots but distressing and they are cutoffs and they are the three and a half short in a size four or 27. Those look super cute. I love those. And then these, cause I have to try them. Look it up. It's so funny. Um, they are like totally acid wash. They are Y M I. Oh, what are they called? Want a better butt? <laughs> Want a better butt shorts? And they are in a size seven, so it is a junior brand. Nub and Nub. They are, um, it says Nub and Nub first level. And they are the, well, it just says fashion jeans, and it says extra large 46, which is confusing to me. Not very really sure what that means. Look at these, holy cow. They are light wash, they're skinny, they are blown out, they are faded out, 
they have embroidery on the pockets and a big ass N and N on the pocket. And then last up is a pair of Reformation jeans. These are in a size 26. Definitely a very, very high rise. And guess what? They're a skinny jean. <laughs> now, I don't know for some of these brands, my gross projections are always based on having researched these items at that at the time, um, which at this time was May. So I looked up that some of these brands and said, what does it look like they've sold for on either Poshmark or eBay? And I was kind of shocked. So I'm going to go ahead and say that these projections are on the high side. Um, but they came in between 650 and uh, 1045 Yeah, that seems a bit too high to me for these. But based on comps at the time, that's what they were moving for. Now on my last box, I grossed, if you watch that recap, I grossed about $500 and ended up making 300 on it. So even if we came in at the same cost or at the same results for this box, I'd still say that it's a winner. Anything that you don't pay that much for and can make three, four, five times the investment is definitely worth it. But do be aware, you have to be a reseller that is selling things at all different price points or this might not be as advantageous for you because there will only be a very limited number of items that are at the higher high, high high or higher price points. Um, and also do note that it takes a little bit of time. You're gonna get two big old boxes. You're gonna have to look through the items. You're gonna have to pick through which ones look good and which ones don't. And then if you're like me, you'll probably miss a few pairs and when you get behind the ring light to take the picture, you'll notice that some of the other ones that you didn't go through aren't so good. So if you don't mind doing that, I definitely think that this box is worth the investment. That's why I pick it up sporadically. But if you do want to make more money and you want to do less work, then maybe this box isn't for you. Newbies always that have limited money to invest, I always suggest trying something like this. Yes, it takes more work, but you have less investment to put into it. Um, and it gives you a decent amount of units, so it really helps you build your storefront if you need to build up inventory like I do at the moment. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I really, really do. I appreciate it so much you guys tuning in um, and the conversations that we have back and forth below. So definitely feel free to comment. I will see you on Sunday with the Sunday Sales Lowdown where we talk about everything that sold the previous week, the good, the bad, the ugly. So you'll definitely want to tune in to watch that. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I'll see you then. Bye. So that just gives you an idea of um, the types of things that you get in this box. Nope, don't need those. Okay, trying to look on camera as to how to get to it. Okay.